Okay guys, um, I'm going to do a let's play right now of Gloomwood. Gloomwood, if you don't know, is a uh, sort of spiritual successor to Thief. It certainly has a visual style and look and feel that is very much like Thief. Um, except it's a little bit different. It takes place in more of a Victorian setting than a medieval slash Victorian setting, but it still has a lot of the steampunk elements and things like that. Uh, in addition to that, you seem to be someone trying to escape a group of hunters. The city is populated with uh, monsters and monster hunters, and you have to sneak your way through the city and try and escape. And that is the basic setup for Gloomwood, so we're going to jump right into it. I did do a Let's Play earlier, but it was having some issues. So, we are going to try this again. We're going to do a new game. Um, I'm doing it on Crescent because it allows me to save anywhere. Uh, I'm a little frustrated that this game does not have a difficulty that allows you, like, you, you, being able to save anywhere is dependent on the difficulty. Um, at least they did put the feature in the game to save anywhere, I just am a little frustrated that it's directly tied to difficulty, but whatever. So, we're going to try this game and see if it'll still work this time. So this was done by New Blood Games. Uh, they're pretty famous for a Medieval and Dusk, which are very sort of retro 90s shooters. Um, in addition to something called Maximum Action, which is kind of like <clears throat> Max Payne meets Fear uh, in terms of gameplay. So it's a pretty interesting game. I am playing on 720. Uh, I think one of the issues with the record software before was um, I had a couple of frame rate issues during play, and I think it freaked out. Doctor, apologies that I could not encounter you in person. For now, take this vial and find your way into the manor on the main street. I await your arrival, G. Okay, so as you can see, I mean, things like the lanterns and things like that are very reminiscent of Thief. The mix of these sort of cobblestone and brick textures, the look, the feel. Uh, it has more geometrical complexity than the original Thief games, but not by much. So, I'm going to go over here. So yeah, you can open the, and that's another thing I brought up in the, in the Let's Play that didn't record, is that um, in addition to looking like Thief, this game is going to play very much like Thief. Uh, not only in terms of, if you can see in the bottom right corner, that light gem, so as I get closer to the light, it fills up more and more, and then I go back into shadow. Um, but also just the control scheme is almost ripped directly from Thief uh, 2, the Metal Age. Um, with your lean keys and use as F and all of that good stuff. The only thing is, is crouch is um, control, which I believe is C in the original Thief games, uh, but I always switch it to control. So yeah, I'm just going to go down here. has a mantling mechanic, much like Thief as well. And look at these windows. I mean, these windows are directly ripped out of Thief. So, uh, New Blood Studios has been doing some sort of indie stuff. Let me just check my stream here. Make sure it's good. Okay. Or my record, I should say. So yeah, once again, walking on metal or noisy surfaces is a big no-no and will get you in trouble. So, let's see how this is going. Pick this up. So it's left mouse for a quick swipe and then this is your uh, backstab, much like in Thief, and it will dispatch enemies in a single blow if you hit them from behind. So. extremely hygienic sewer cheese. Another thing about this game, so um, I don't, I think the people who worked on this may have been tangentially involved in games like Neon Struct, uh, which 
I have actually done a playthrough on my channel and I have a review that I just need to edit and upload. But Neon Struct is essentially the gameplay of Thief set in the world of Deus Ex. So, um, it's a pretty interesting game. I like it a lot. And it's just a little indie title. The graphics are even more rudimentary than this, but. Let me just check the stream again. Okay, looking good so far. So control to crouch and creep. Uh, if you can hold shift and move more silently, you might want to do that on noisier surfaces and then right up behind them like this, and there we go. Now I'm probably going to be pretty proficient at this because I did just finish a playthrough and I, I was a little upset that the stream didn't take, so I'm going to be trying to... Uh, I'm not going to like speed run it, but I'm just going to try and get through fairly quickly. So once again, you know, very immersive simi, very thief, uh, highlighting the different things like drawers and stuff in the world. Now I didn't get all the gold coins last time. There is a secret door you can open and we're going to try for it this time, but no promises because I did quite a bit of searching last time and I still couldn't find them all. So yeah, when you get into melee, you can block melee attacks and stuff like that. Fairly confident I can get to this guy before he sees me. There we go. And pay attention to things like this, like what's behind there? How do you get there? Well, we're gonna figure that out. Yes, uh, this has been called Thief with Guns by the creators themselves, which, um, as I said before in my last record of this, I think that is very much sort of an interesting take on Thief, especially since that was kind of Warren Spector's whole complaint with Thief. One of the reasons Deus Ex, Deus Ex exists is because Warren Spector was frustrated with not being able to get past certain sections of the game because he just wasn't as good at the stealth. And uh, Thief or excuse me, Deus Ex is definitely uh, a response to that. He wanted to have basically as many options as possible for the player to get through a game like, you know, uh, get through any sort of game. That was his thing in developing that, that RPG. So, um, this adds another dimension to the gameplay. Uh, if you do get discovered, like if you get discovered in Thief, it's pretty tough, right? It's pretty tough to uh, to hold your own and actually fight back. Whereas in this game, since you have guns, you've got a little something that you can do. I'm gonna wait for this guy. Forget where he goes. Of course, you can pick up and throw bottles to distract enemies as well. But I am just taking the same freaking path this time. So yeah, this is a cool feature. Also, I found out in my last playthrough, you can stab people through these. So if, if you're concealed like this, right, and a guard comes up, you can go up to him and do that sort of thing. So that would be this slow opening door. Now everything like opening doors like that and, and things makes noise, moving too fast, so you have to be careful about how much noise you're making, for sure. And these are these sort of monsters slash witch hunters that are in the city. So as you can see gameplay wise, it's a pretty thaf faithful uh, to thief. See this? Captain, the men managed to confiscate one of the seals required to negate the dark magics blocking Lady Sylvia's doors. We have reason to believe the foreigner is planning to take ref refuge within the Countess's high walls. I think that's me, the foreigner. The seal has been placed in the jailhouse evidence locker. As for the other seal, it continues to evade us. A local resident who once worked as a manor servant claims it was lost during the last flood and may have fallen to the tunnels beneath this district. As such, we have several men searching around the cistern's entrance by the dock. 
cistern entrance by the dock. Our eyes remain open. Night watcher rings. Okay. So, another cool mechanic here that was in uh, Thief 1 and 2, 2 for sure. So you can lean against doors to hear behind them. And I opened that too fast, so he freaked out, but thankfully he didn't turn around, so. I forgot to, see, I'm, I'm sort of, I'm not quite speedrunning, but uh, I just did all this, so I'm a little frustrated. Not frustrated, I just, you know. I do like the reload mechanics in this game. Speaking of which... This revolver, by the way, is super, super cool looking. Um, this little fin underneath the barrel here, uh, that is, well, it looks a little bit like a new army, but a new army is a black powder revolver, and of course not a break open. And um, this probably wouldn't be a break open either, in reality, because there's no hinge underneath. But um, it does look a lot like, if anyone is familiar with the show Deadwood, it does look a lot like the sheriff's uh, Timothy Oliphant's character. It looks a lot like his gun from that show, uh, which is, I believe, an 18, 1885 Remington, 1895 Remington, something to that effect. Um, and it's a really good-looking gun, and the reason it has that fin is because it was developed right after the age of percussion revolvers. And um, so it was sort of common to have this fin. Now, in percussion cap revolvers, which are black powder, this little fin right here uh, acts, well, it, it houses the loading lever, which is literally just like this lever that you use to push the round in. So basically, you put your uh, gunpowder in the front of the cylinder, and then you put a bullet, little lead ball bullet, um, on top of the cylinder, and then you push it down with that lever. Um, and it's actually, the bullet is slightly bigger than the opening of the cylinder, and that's because you want it to sort of seal into place. Um, it shaves off a little extra material, and it get a really nice tight, sometimes even watertight seal. Got some more shotgun ammo there, which reminds me. Let me see if I can reload this. Okay, that's good. key. Some more ammo here. The constables can't keep doing this. This is the third broken rifle this week. It's bad enough that we have to guard our own district. They claim they lack the manpower, but we've seen how the upper city estates are protected. No expense was spared for their equipment and fancy automated security devices. Now the only firepower we have access to are these shoddy leftover munitions they gave us. These rifles break and jam if you just look at them too hard, and many of us have resorted to using our woodcutting axes just to fill in the gaps. How are we supposed to stop the beasts now? Do they want our district to become like the Soatworks? So yeah, there's mon like I said, there's monsters in this game, and uh... And we will encounter them later. So it's got a bit of a horror bent, you know, which the Thief series always really did as well. Um, you've got the, the cathedral in the first game with the zombies and everything. Uh, there's ghosts and uh, like tree monsters and things like that in the second. There's um, obviously the Shalebridge Cradle, which in my opinion in Thief Deadly Shadows is the scariest piece of gameplay in any video game ever. I think the atmosphere is perfect. I think everything about it is perfect. So here's the first seal we need to open up that door. Actually, I meant to go over here. It's a little secret I found just this last time. 
It's a little bit easier to spot now. I guess the lighting's a little bit different. I've got this different uh, off-colored bit of wall here. And the switch is around here somewhere. There it is. Get in there as well. There we go, we get a monocle. That allows you to zoom, much like Garrett's eye in Thief 3. Yeah, I like the reloading mechanic in this game. Because, look, now we're back out here. Pretty cool. I like the reloading mechanic in this game because, uh, you know, you have to put your individual rounds into the uh, cylinder, right? And this is very steampunky. This is a lot of sort of the steampunky technology you'd see in something like Thief as well. Um, I'm just going to put that in over here. It's ready to go. But uh, the one issue I have with this game so far in terms of relations to Thief is that uh, in Thief, destroying light sources or removing light sources is kind of a big part of the gameplay, you know? And you, so far as I can tell, you can't really do it in this game. It's not really possible, so... Um, it's a little bit strange, but the light gem works really well. Uh, sound propagation in the game is okay, although determining sound on the z-axis, like up or down from you, is a little bit different. Like over in that warehouse room over there, you will hear someone, he'll sound like right next to me, but he's actually one or two floors below. So, so I'm going to save real quick. Oh yeah, this is your inventory. It's pretty cool how it works like this. Just saved real quick. Oh. So again, I'm just going to check the video feed here. Okay, looks like recording is working well. Okay. I'm going to try this again. So I got him through the window, which is cool. Got both of them through the window. That was a strat I used last time, which worked pretty well. I liked it. So I'm gonna go hide these guys. Okay, that works. I think some. I think one of them clipped through the map. Oh yeah, so like right here, you're in the vent, it's made of metal. You can hold uh, the creep button while you're crouched, it makes you a little quieter. Of course, moving and stacking objects, like in the original Thief as well. Um, Nine a.m. Timber from the Tithe Wild two crates. Ten a.m. Blackwater Spine Gators one barrel. Twelve p.m. Ash Brew two barrels. 3 p.m. High Cleft Dark Plums, one sack. 5 p.m. Gold Fee from Sir Winslow, one sack. 6 p.m. Redwood Craft Side Table. Who ordered this? It's ugly as sin. B. Burly Jonathan. So I thought this was just a bit of world building, which it is, but it also serves another purpose, which is that they said there was a bag of gold delivered, and wouldn't you know it? There you go. So that's pretty cool. going to save again real quick. And as I said, I really, really like how fluid everything feels in the game. The, ju the jumping with the mantling mechanic and everything feels really, really nice. 
Um, using the inventory and stuff like that is really like fluid and nice. The controls just... Maybe it's because I've played way too much Thief in my life, but the controls just make sense. They just work like flawlessly, so... This is a very thief view. Just drop him in the water there. Cistern is open. I'm gonna go. This way. Gonna look for any gold coins around here, around the dock, just in case. I think there's one deck there. I'll get it later. Yeah, I figured he clipped he clipped down here through that. Go through this. Didn't mean for that to happen. He, uh, I forgot that he moved, but I probably could have heard it. I'm sure some of you on the Let's Play are like, dude, didn't you hear him moving? Yeah. I, uh, to be honest, I did. I just figured he might stay in his one position. I'm just going to double check, make sure there's no gold underneath this. No. Okay. So now we're going to traverse the sewers. Going to enter the cistern. See, that's what I'm talking about, like dismantling mechanic. Um, what I did last playthrough, actually, was I went... By the way, hold, hold, you move faster when you holster weapons. Um, I wanted to get up there and see if there was anything there, so I figured I'd go up there because there's a flat top of roof. And what I did was I stacked these barrels and boxes and jumped onto the lamp and then jumped up there. And there is an invisible wall up there, which is horseshit. But uh, aside from that, um, that w it all worked seamlessly. Just you know, it doesn't look very climbable, but trust me, you start playing around with these mechanics and it is very climbable. So uh, yes. Once again, something I really, really liked about the game uh, so far. So we're getting into one of the creepier aspects, but you know, the one thing again that I like is it's very much sticking to something like Thief's stealth rules, where just because there's monsters doesn't mean like, oh god, you have to run, or like, you know, cower, or whatever. Like, you can sneak past them, they shouldn't be able to see you. And, um, yeah, uh, you don't really have to engage in combat if you don't want to. In fact, most of these guards are probably could have ghosted past, but I like to take people out. Attention! By order of the constabulary, all entries to the city sewers are to be closed and boarded off. Several city servants and officers report of beastly infestations plaguing the tunnels. Any persons found to be breaking quarantine will face legal ramifications, and the constabulary will not expend a brave, brave officer lives to rescue them. Sounds a little bit familiar, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Okay, gotta get down here and get this. Another coin. Again, I feel like I'm pretty good about getting these coins. No, I see. Nope, that was a little bit too far. Okay, got that coin. 
So yeah, there is a lantern too in this game. You can provide your own light source. Obviously in a stealth game, not the best choice all the time. Yes, there's creepiness in this game. Once again, I just played through this, so it's not going to be as atmospheric. I apologize because I'm just kind of moving through. Uh, but yes, I think that the game actually does build tension very well. The first time I played it, hell, even just now when I played it, it seemed very uh, atmospheric, you know, and uh, creepy. See, listen to that. I don't, I'm not a big fan of that noise. Do away with our lantern real quick. Sister and gate instructions. For anyone left in this dreaded stra station, these levers control the pressure gates in the cistern. The levers, as they run from leftmost to right, control room, storage room, main canal slash pump. If you are struggling to navigate to the corresponding gate, you can follow each of the pipes to their destination. Take care not to forget the lantern, as the crow men have been quite aggressive lately. I've dismantled the lever to the pump room and shelved it in the storage room after the last attack. Okay, so... Yeah, now the, the creepy uh, monsters are about, out and about, so i got to go deal with that. And I'm going to, well I just saved, so that's fine. I love this reloading mechanic. So great. Good on those. Here's the switch for the pump room. And there is no gold in here? That's a little strange. Let me just go through my mysterious guardhouse lever, handle enter, monocle, cane sword, revolver, shotgun, revolver, shotgun, shells, cheese, gold. 13. So I'm wondering how many pieces of gold I have to get to finish or to open that secret. There is a secret door around here I gotta get into. This is a nice touch too. Empty shotgun shells. Again, it's really going for the, you know, the whole immersive sim thing. And, uh, you know, Harvey Smith, I think, has been on record saying that, you know, like, the next generation of immersive sims is likely going to come uh, from the indie market and you know with games like Neon Struct and uh, this and there's uh, one other like really good immersive sim that I'm forgetting right now uh, I think that that is really coming to fruition um, the one thing I would say about this game is that it's or a lot of the immersive sims that are coming out is that you know, and it, it sort of Warren Spector had this, uh, and not just him, but a lot of the other sort of looking glass veterans, they had this opinion that a lot of what's going on right now, see the secret tunnels down here somewhere. But hold up, like, shouldn't I be able to get up over there somewhere? Like, what? Hmm, huh, that's strange. Anyways. I'm going to save again real quick.
Let's go, let's rock. Come on. Anyone else? Huh? No? Alright. Okay. Now I'm gonna get my pistol out and my lantern so I can see what the hell's going on. So I got the other part of the seal there. And now we are on our way. I can't remember if there's three or four down here. Good on cheese. I'm gonna eat some. And So much like in Thief, you can restore part of your health with, you know, like cheese and stuff. Nope, I want this one. Sorry, I'm just looking for extra gold just in case. Uh, because I do want to try and get that door open. I, I missed some pieces last time, but um, you never know if you might find them again. See what I'm saying about that mantling? It just it just really works well. The controls are really, really tight. <clears throat> but anyways, what I was saying about Immersive Sims uh, coming from the indie sphere is that I feel like a lot of them are just kind of like reiterating um, things like Thief, things like System Shock, things like Deus Ex, and very few of them are, are trying something new. Um, so while this is really cool, it is essentially just, you know, there can be more immersive sims than just Thief and Deus Ex and System Shock, you know. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, this one ad does add some further dimensionality to the game by, you know, including guns, as you just saw. You know, I was able to kind of take those monsters on by conserving ammo and, and waiting. But still, uh, it is, at its core, as you've seen, basically just a sort of indie-made Thief game. Which is fine, I love that, you know. I just, you know, I'd like to see some fresher ideas coming forth. You know, Pathologic 2, for example, I think is pretty fresh. Although, one of the issues is, as people have pointed out, it's not a fun game, it's kind of an arduous game. So, but anyways, I'm just checking, recording again. Looks good. The issue before was I, I was, like, missing frames. And so it was only recording one frame every like five seconds or so. It was crazy. So it was just basically still images except for the very beginning. I wonder if there's a piece of gold in one of these lights. That would be kind of interesting. So yeah, we control the gate axis here. piece of health here. Put my lantern away. I don't really need it right now. Yeah, these lights up in the tower like that. Very, very thief. Especially Thief 2. Which is the best one in my opinion. Although I know it's sacrilegious, sometimes Thief 3 does battle for that spot in my mind. I really liked Thief 3. Um, and I don't hate the Dark Project, but, you know, it's not my favorite. I really have to convince myself to play that one, you know. I'm guessing there are 15 coins, because I have 13 right now, I've gotten most of them. That seems like a nice sort of round number for them to be grouped in in this game. And I 
just don't know where else they would be, to be honest. It's one of the broken rifles they were talking about. Lever action, I wonder if they'll get that later in the game for me, but maybe not. I wonder if there's one more secret passage somewhere. Just didn't see the switch to. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's another thing. You can break open boxes and find stuff. Um, I just don't know if I'm going to be breaking open every single barrel and box in the game to look for this gold. You know? It's a little ridiculous to me. Plus, I'm a little worried that I might need the barrels, or the boxes, I mean, uh, to reach a higher wedge to find some of the gold I missed. Alright, looks good. Love this revolver. It's basically because it's also if I was to get a revolver, because I I have a 1851 Navy, right? But it's black powder and it's a pain in the ass to use, and it's honestly more of a like um, a display piece or a conversation piece than an actual firearm to go out and shoot. Because uh, not only is it uh, seriously, it it can take up upwards of 10, 15 minutes to load the damn thing. Um, but also, the metal I don't really trust the metallurgy on a lot of the reproductions. Um, so, yeah, I don't want to put my safety in the hands of whatever. So basically, so the loads that you have to use are very, very... Uh, it's, it's lighter than... It feels like shooting a BB gun. It's like shoot, it, I think it's just enough pressure to get the bullet to leave the barrel. And so what this means is that it's not really impactful to shoot. It just kind of goes Psh! And it's also wildly inaccurate. I mean, I've had bullet drop off within like 15 feet before. So like I said, it you know, and you wouldn't want to put any more powder in than they recommend because then you really are playing with fire. You know, you really do run the risk of hurting yourself if that cylinder explodes or something like that. So um, another issue is, uh, People don't really know this. Black powder is incredibly dirty. It's just filthy. And so the gun will start jamming, right? It will start jamming within seven, eight shots. Um, the cylinder will have trouble rotating, and the hammer will get grimy and stuck up on stuff. And yeah, it's just, it is not a good... reliable gun. In fact, in places like the Civil War uh, or in the American West and stuff like that, typically what people would do is they'd either carry multiple cylinders, but more commonly, like pirates, they would carry multiple pistols, you know, and they would just have like, I don't know, 10 Colt navies just all over their person, just ready to go. Um, and that's how they did it. Uh, so that they could have lots of ammo and not have to worry about jamming and stuff like that. Also, the whole percussion cap system in revolvers is just, it's not a good setup for a gun. Um, it's its prone to misfires and hang fires and all sorts of other stuff, so. Uh, but, you get a cartridge revolver that looks like this. It's, you know, I don't think it looks as good as the Navy, the Navy or the, uh, the new army. Um... I think it's a 68 new army, but it is still, it's got sort of some of the profile of those guns while also being a primarily cartridge revolver, which is what I like. And I think it operates on the same principles as a single action army, so. Um, I have heard that you can get them fairly cheap. Uh, I, I would really want to look that up because at my local stores and stuff like that, uh, even if it's a single action revolver, it's usually still fairly expensive. I mean, you know, there's a lot of machining and stuff going on in there, so. I feel like I'm missing something here. Like I'm missing an extra passage.
or a secret door or something. You know? Try this again. So, see what I'm saying over there? It's all flat on that roof. Um, there's an invisible wall there, so you can't really get over there. And uh, I don't think there's anything over here that I can get. Yeah. There's nothing. There's no hidden switches or anything, as far as I can tell. I'll try going this way. No, it pretty much ends right here. See what I'm saying? Like, the mantling mechanic allows for a decent amount of verticality in the game. Um, this is just a really well programmed game. It just really feels nice. Uh, at least for the aesthetic it's going for, it looks nice. It's got dynamic lighting. Just really, really, I'm really digging it. So, very excited to see the final game. Um, I don't, I can't say I'm as thrilled about the story as I am for a game like Thief. I mean, it, the, the world doesn't seem as interesting. Like I said, they leaned. A uh, little too heavily into the Victorian, um, but we'll see. I mean, I'm not going to pass judgment yet. I'm just this is these are my impressions so far. So, yeah, I'm definitely missing some gold. So, I'm not going to waste time hunting around for it. All right, so we're going to finish up this playthrough once again since I have quite a few of those pieces of gold. I may come back and find them on my own time, and. Uh, don't see what else they could be so yeah we're gonna finish this up here now I'm just gonna check recording again looks good can't say for sure about the frame rate but you know So yeah, New Blood Games uh, made this. If you want to check out the website for this, it is literally called thiefwithguns.com, I believe. And uh, you can find it also on Steam. I believe the demo is still up on Steam, although they did say that the demo... I think the demo is on a timer, like a limited time. So it might be removed from Steam at some point. I don't know. I'm not a doctor. Um, but yeah, check it out. I mean, if, you, if this looked interesting to you, check it out yourself. Um, and yeah, they said that Early Access is coming out soon, right here on this screen like this. Uh, so, we will see. Uh, so yeah, thanks for tuning in to check out Gloomwood. Um, it's a game I'm pretty excited to see the full experience. Although, I can't say for sure if I'll be getting it Early Access. really don't like Early Access games that ruin the plot or... Or I've seen most of the levels before, but they're not finished, and then the final game comes out, and then I'm very bored by it because I've played through it all a million times, you know, uh, in the early access version. So I may wait for the official release, but I also may not. So we'll see. Anyways, guys, that's it for today.